Hello and welcome to Winging It. So as you might have seen by now, Wingspan is available on Board Game Arena. So you now have another option for playing digital Wingspan online against other players. And even in just a few short weeks that it's been available online, it's already becoming one of the most popular games to play on Board Game Arena, which I think is really great to see. And actually the timing of when it was released on Board Game Arena almost perfectly coincided with the two-year anniversary of the official digital implementation provided by Monster Couch. So I thought in this video I would just go through each of the digital implementations of Wingspan and uh, yeah, give my views on you know what the pros and cons are of each of these and uh, maybe that will help give some insight into which one of these might be more suitable for you. So obviously there's going to be some objective facts in this video. Uh, but a lot of it is going to come down to subjectivity. So these are just my personal views. You're obviously free to disagree with those. And uh, yeah, if you do you know, have different views to mine, let me know in the comments. And uh, I'd be interested to hear those. So we will start by taking a look at the new challenger in Board Game Arena. And uh, one of the definite pros that I have seen uh, from my experiences playing on Board Game Arena is the fact that there are built-in ranked matches. So of course, you can play just standard games against your friends and not worry about any sort of ranking or elo uh, but if you are going to match up against random players online uh, there is a built-in elo system which will give you points based on the results of your games and obviously if you can win more games you will gain more points and rise up the global leaderboard so that's very good to see of course this is a pretty standard practice across most of the games available on board game arena but um, yeah that's good to see for wingspan as well and kind of tied to that uh, having built-in game statistics at the end of each of your games uh, is very nice to see. So I believe these are only available to premium members. But yeah, just being able to see you know, where you're scoring your points uh, and being able to compare where you're scoring compared to average players uh, across the Wingspan community is really nice. I think that's a real good touch. And uh, yeah, you know, it's going to help improve gameplay, I think. People will be able to see maybe where they're missing out on points compared to other people or you know, other areas that they can improve on to get their scores up. Next up on the list is being able to have more customization in the games. So as standard on board game arena, you are able to pick and choose who you want to play with, maybe based on ELO ranking or based on karma reputation. So you can be pretty sure that you're going to get reliable opponents, uh, people who aren't going to time out on games. But not only that, there are some additional customization options that were included a few days after launch. Uh, and that is to exclude the four overpowered birds from the base game deck, being the two ravens, the Franklin Skull, and the Killdeer. And yeah, I just think being able to maybe customize the deck a little bit, take out some of the birds that you believe are too overpowered, or maybe ruin the balance of the game, I think is a nice touch. Now, obviously, this isn't going to be for everyone, but I think being able to have that option uh, it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. You know, if you want to play with them, you can. You can leave them in. Uh, but if you prefer to keep them out, you have that option. And uh, yeah, I think that's a really good thing to include in the game. The next thing that I like that they have on Board Game Arena uh, is the in-game chat. So this is a pretty nice feature to have. Obviously, again, quite standard across Board Game Arena, uh, but not something that most people playing Wingspan digitally will have experienced. And yeah, I just think being able to kind of speak with your opponents, obviously wish them good luck, before the games and uh, yeah maybe talk about strategy and kind of maybe some of your frustrations but also uh, you know admirations of good moves by your opponent I think being able to talk to your opponents during the game it definitely adds to the experience for me next up as well we have got the turn log and game replay so um, these kind of both tie in together uh, but they are technically two separate things but I thought I'd put them together in one point here um, so obviously when you're playing the game uh, along the right hand side again a standard on board game arena uh, there is a turn log so you can scroll back through it's going to show you everything that you've done but also that your opponent's done as well so you know, maybe you forgot uh, what your opponent took from the bird tray on that previous turn you can just go and check the game log uh, and that's really nice I think just being able to see that and have it so accessible and then of course not only that but after the games uh, there is a full game replay available not only from your perspective but from your opponent's perspectives as well so you can go back, you can see what your opponent's hand was, and you can see every move that they made. And uh, yeah, that's really good. I think that's a good learning process as well. You know, I think for people who are new at the game, being able to watch some of those match replays, not just of their own matches, but of other players as well, just to see that sort of thought process and decision making. I think that is really critical to improve gameplay. And last, but by no means least, 
this is probably the biggest advantage I would say on Board Game Arena, and that is that it is free to play. Of course, it is a premium game, so to create tables, to create games, you do have to be a premium member, which is a paid membership. Um, however, anyone with you know whether you're premium or not is free to join any game. So you know, as I said at the start. Wingspan is very quickly becoming one of the most popular games played on Board Game Arena. So tables are always popping up every minute or so. And uh, yeah, even if you aren't a premium member, you can just hang around. And uh, if you are patient, a table will come up, you can join that and you can play the game for free. And I think this is a really great way to introduce Wingspan to people who maybe haven't had the chance to play it before. And uh, yeah, see if it's for them or not. And they can get some good experience playing the game. Now, obviously, there cannot be pros without a few cons as well. And uh, yeah, the Board Game Arena implementation, as good as it is, it definitely is missing a few things. And I think for me, the big one is that it is base game only. So there aren't expansions available on Board Game Arena. And uh, not only that, but it has been, I would say, almost officially confirmed by Stone Miner that this is going to remain the way. So it doesn't seem like expansions will be coming to Board Game Arena for Wingspan anytime soon, which is a shame. I think you know, definitely the European expansion and obviously the Oceania expansion and even the upcoming Asia expansion uh, for the physical game, which is to be released later this year. You know, we want to be seeing those on the digital versions as soon as possible so that we can play them online with our friends and uh, yeah, get more experience with that. So it is definitely a shame, uh, but I can understand the decision as well. But obviously that is something to bear in mind that yeah, if you are going to commit to playing on board gamer in the long term, you are only going to be able to play on the base game. My next criticism of Board Game Arena uh, is that visually it's quite basic. You know, it's quite bare bones, uh, not very flashy. You know What you see is what you get. Uh, it gives you the components of the game. It gives you the boards and kind of the, the printouts of the cards available on your screen. Uh, and there you go. That's the game to play. So, you know, it does what it says on the tin. Um, you know, in a way you could say this is a positive but I think definitely as you know, some of the points will come on to later when we look at the Monster Couch version um, I think definitely it is kind of on the more uh, sterile side of things and yeah there is an in-game chat uh, but if players aren't using that it can feel quite quiet and uh, you know quite a lonely experience playing on board game arena so obviously it is what you make of it but um, yeah for me it's uh, not the most visually appealing way to play the game and finally, my last criticism, I would say, of the Board Game Arena implementation is that just in general, gameplay feels quite slow. Uh, I think what they have done with some of the customization options that I talked about earlier, you know, you can set certain time limits on each turn. So if you're looking for a really quick game, you can set minimal time limits, make sure that people are taking their turns quickly. Uh, but even then, I think just the process of going through the turns, it feels quite slow. There's a lot of clicking. There's a lot of, you know, making sure you're taking the right piece, taking the right move. And there's a lot of confirmations. Now, I found that even just when I'm laying eggs, I have to confirm every single time that I'm happy with what I'm doing. And you know, I completely get that that is going to help reduce mistakes uh, and just you know making sure that people are laying eggs in the right places or taking the right food or tucking the right cards. It is good to have that confirm option in there. Uh, but I find it does slow the game down. And you know, I've had opponents have this problem. I've had the problem myself where you forget or you think you've clicked confirm and you haven't and it will just be sat there. Your timer will be counting down, waiting for you to confirm. And uh, yeah, that definitely does add time to the game, which is a shame because I think uh, this is a game that can be played relatively quickly uh, if people are comfortable with what they're doing. So having gone through my views on the Board Game Arena implementation, we can now take a look at the Monster Couch version, which of course has been out for a couple of years now, released in September of 2020 with the base game. And then they followed that up with the launch of the European expansion a few months ago earlier this year in 2022. So I've got a lot of experience playing on the Monster Couch version. Now I've been playing almost exclusively on there um, since it did come out a couple of years ago. So um, yeah, I'll take you through my views on what the pros and cons are of these. So for a start, definitely for me, the most obvious pro of using the Monster Couch version is just how good it looks. It's absolutely gorgeous. I think anyone who's played it would agree um, just the way that they've implemented this with the bird animations, you know, the way the cards and the components look, for me is a big reason why I enjoy playing Wingspan in the physical version. And I think that's translated so well here into the digital version as well. So yeah, just being able to have that experience with how the birds look and 
as I say, all the components. It is really, really stunning. So, yeah, that definitely helps for me to enjoy playing that game a lot more digitally. And sort of tied into that is our next point, which is that absolutely amazing in-game music. So, you know, I've made no secret of this before. I think it's just really, really good music. And it definitely adds to the vibe. I think, you know, I've heard a lot of stories from people who they're playing in the physical game, but they will still get this music on in the background because it's just some combination of the relaxing sounds, the bird chirping in there as well to kind of give you that atmosphere, that ambiance when you're playing the game. It definitely, for me, adds a lot. And uh, yeah, I can't play this game or I really struggle to play this game without having that music on and without having the bird sounds. Um, yeah, that just, for me, adds a whole lot to the experience and uh, it really does improve the gameplay. The next pro for the Monster Couch version is just how much more playable it is on a wider variety of devices. So obviously, whereas the Board Game Arena version is available purely through a web browser, so you are mostly going to be playing on the computer or maybe on your phone at a push, the Monster Couch version is available on much, much more devices officially. So uh, you obviously can play it on your computer, you can play it on iOS and Android, it's available on Nintendo Switch, and it's available on Microsoft Xbox. So, so many options and uh, plenty of portable options as well. You know, I think the mobile application is really, really strong, so you can play games on the go. Obviously, for Board Game Arena, you can open up the uh, the website in your phone's web browser, but it is quite small, it is quite cramped, and I find that quite difficult to play. So definitely, if I am going to be playing on the move, it's gonna to have to be the Monster Couch version. Next point on the list, and we did kind of touch upon this a little bit before when we were looking at the negative sides of Board Game Arena, but it's that Monster Couch has expansions, and we know they are going to be introducing further expansions as well as when they are released in the physical version. So, yeah, as I said, uh, we did get the release of the European expansion earlier this year, and uh, we know that Monster Couch are, of course, working hard to get the Oceania expansion released as well digitally. So I think the whole community is definitely excited for that. And so, yeah, knowing that we're secured in getting these expansions going forward uh, is definitely reassuring and definitely exciting. The next point on the list is that the Monster Couch version has AI and Automa modes available. So obviously this is something not available on Board Game Arena. Uh, you can only play against other people, whereas on the Monster Couch version, there is the Automa system, which has been ported over from the physical game, as well as three different difficulties of AI for you to play against. So I think that's a good option to have, you know, maybe if you don't have much time or you know, maybe you don't want to or can't play against other people, you know, you're just looking to practice against the AI. I think this is a good option to have and yeah, definitely one that I like to see uh, in play there on the Monster Couch version. And the last part of my list, this kind of is supplemental to the game, but I think it counts and I think it ties in. It's just how strong the online community is. So obviously this comes with time. Uh, as I said, you know, the game has been out for just over two years now. And uh, I think Monster Culture has done a really good job of kind of building the online community. But not only that, the community itself has really kind of expanded and built itself on there. So, you know, there's a really strong community on the Discord server. And then naturally uh, that kind of spawned to the Wingspan Tournaments Discord server, which I, I've been a member of for a long time. So, yeah, just a real great online community sort of surrounding that. And, uh, yeah, I think that makes playing on the Monster Couch version really a good experience. It's just having that community around it. Now, as before, when we looked at Board Game Arena, you can't have a few pros without having some cons in there as well. So the big one, definitely, I see a lot of people commenting about this, and it is a frustration I find as well, is that there are still quite a few bugs in the game. And so obviously with the launch of the European expansion, that did introduce quite a few bugs. Uh, and it has been out for a little while now, and there are still a number of really key bugs that are in there and that can break the game and can really ruin the experience. So yeah, it is definitely frustration, I think, as well for newer players who maybe don't understand fully the rules of the game when you have these bugs that are sort of going against, you know, what your natural intuition would be. It can make it quite difficult to play and quite difficult to learn. So that is definitely a frustration. But equally for experienced players, you know, we find our ways of working around these bugs. I think being aware of them and you know, knowing how and when they trigger can really sort of help you mitigate that. But that definitely isn't something we should have to be doing. You know, we should be able to play this game how we want and uh, not have these bugs in the game. So I know Monster Couch are working on it, uh, but it is definitely a, a notable con, I would say, of that version. 
Next up, and again, this sort of ties in with what we talked a little bit about on the board game arena side, is just the lack of customization within the game. You know, it's been out for a couple of years, and yet the only option for playing random online matches is three player. And that suits some people. You know, three player is not something I was that keen on at first, and while it has grown on me, uh, I am still almost exclusively a 1v1 player. And yeah, just not having that option to do that randomly online is a real frustration. So again, that sort of ties into this community aspect. One of the great things about being on the Wingspan Tournaments Discord server is that you can always find a reliable opponent, whether that's for a 1v1, a 3-player, 4 or 5-player, or any kind of game mode you're looking for. You can always find a reliable opponent where you're going to set that up. So yeah, we've sort of found our way around some of these limited customization options, uh, but it certainly is not necessarily something we should have to do. And kind of tied into this is the customization around uh, the bird deck. So again, in the board game arena version, pretty quickly, they allowed for the removal of birds such as the Franklin's Girl and the Kildit and the two Ravens. And this is something that we've kind of been asking for, I think, as well. Uh, towards the monster couch side of things and yeah that customization doesn't really seem to be appearing anytime soon uh, that is definitely something i would like to see and again sort of tied into this uh the last point i would say that goes against the monster couch version is just the unreliability of online opponents and so obviously i think anyone who's played uh in the random online matchmaking you are going to get people who drop out of the game uh kind of without explanation or just take really slow turns uh, and that can be quite a frustrating experience to deal with. So again, this is probably you know a con on both sides. You're always going to get some kind of unreliability. But I think just some of the options you have on Board Game Arena for you know, setting karma levels for your opponents and just kind of you know being able to be a bit more selective with who you play against, that definitely is not an option that you have here, at least in the basic sense on Monster Couch. Obviously, as I say, through uh, systems like the Wingspan Tournament's Discord server, you are able to find many many more reliable opponents but yeah just not having that option kind of as default in the game is definitely a frustration so there we have it those are my views on the pros and cons of monster couch and board game arena and i think naturally the next thing to kind of ask yourself is which version is best you know which is the one for me and i would say if you've never experienced wingspan before or at least you've never experienced it digitally give board game arena a go you know, as i said it's free to play Anyone can create an account, go and find a table, join in and play a game. And you can pick how many players you want to play with. It's very customizable. You, know, you can choose right down to whether you want to play with people you know or just random strangers. Uh, you know, definitely go and give that a try. However, if you are more into Wingspan, if you've played it loads, be that on board game arena already or just in the physical version, and maybe you want to play on the go, you, you want to play on your phone, maybe on the train to work, Definitely the Monster Couch version is the way to go. And I think just as well, if you're looking for the all-round better experience with a more visually appealing user interface and just kind of better music options and obviously having the expansions as well is a big one. Uh, yeah, if you're going to be serious about playing Wingspan and definitely more serious about playing it competitively, it's got to be the Monster Couch version. And uh, come and join us over on the Wingspan Tournaments Discord. So as I said as well, obviously a lot of this is going to be my personal opinion. So let me know in the comments, you know, how have you experienced playing the board game arena version? How do you think it stacks up compared to Monster Couch? And so, you know, maybe is there anything that Monster Couch can learn from what we've seen on board game arena for implementing in their version to improve the user experience? So thank you everyone for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And so if you're new to this channel, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. I post a lot of gameplay and strategy content for Wingspan. So if you're looking to just watch some games or maybe improve your own gameplay, then uh, yeah, definitely consider subscribing to this channel and uh, checking out some more of my content.